Hey guys, how's it going? So today I wanted to take you past the infrastructure of the SoundGrid network and dive a little deeper into workflow using SoundGrid Studio. A couple housekeeping items, we we'll wanna make sure we select our playback as Wave SoundGrid, which you can see we already have Wave SoundGrid going here. And then we we'll wanna go to peripherals up here in setup and then make sure our MIDI controllers is set to Huey and then send and receive to Studio Rack on eight channels. So again, we have Studio Rack here set up in SoundGrid mode. We have a server one. And we'll want to go here and label all of our channels the same as we have them in Pro Tools. That way, once we get over to SoundGrid Studio here, they will auto-populate and we'll be able to mix the input. And then the second thing is we want to make sure we select the driver channel that we're using. So you can see we were using SoundGrid 1 here. Uh, we'll want to make sure we select SoundGrid 1, 2 inside of Emotion Monitoring. That way it all populates correctly. And what we can do here inside of Studio Rack, we've got that set on all of our channels, is set auto. And it'll pop into playback mode. And then you just hit the space bar and then it'll flip back to input. And you know you have it right if you can hit the space bar and it goes back and forth. So the last thing I wanted to touch on is auto low latency mode. So in Pro Tools, if you are record enabled, then it won't add the delay compensation to the track. So just having Studio Rack in SoundGrid mode is gonna add a little bit of latency by itself. And you want to turn that off so it adds the compensation and every Thing syncs up. So if you're overdubbing a track, then you don't have tracks that are out of sync. So in this tracking configuration, why do we have it set up this way? Basically, what we want to be able to do is mix the input, use plugins, and have full back to the musicians. So with Studio Rock here, you can kind of see the monitoring set up here, but if you go into SoundGrid Studio here and Studio Rex, you have a really nice overview. This section basically looks like Pro Tools for all intents and purposes. You've got all your faders here and you have all your faders here. But in this situation, we're using all these faders for input monitoring only. And then we'll use the faders here for our playback. And that gives us a little bit of flexibility. Say we wanna be recording with the vocal pretty hot. And then for playback, we want it to be lower. We can set this fader to be a little bit lower. And then we've got this one a little hotter. Now we've got six mixes with drummer, bass, guitar, keys, two vocals, and they're all set up in post fader right now. But if you need to, you can adjust individually here, and then you can always go in and to your Studio Rec plugin and then adjust uh, pre, post, input, etc. So you have those options if you want to have control over here and not affect the signal that you're sending to the musicians. So again, during the band's live recording, they're all playing together. This is where we're gonna be monitoring. This is gonna go right to our bus and then also to our musicians to listen to. Now, what about during playback? We've got some material recorded here. And if we go here and play, we are in playback mode now and we're listening to the output of Pro Tools. So all these channels are going to our master bus, which is SoundGrid one and two, and that's gonna show up in SoundGrid Studio. And then you can see that showing up here, except for the effects. So we're not doing any routing inside of Pro Tools. We're just sending out SoundGrid three and four here. And we're doing that because if we set up effects inside Pro Tools, then we would kind of have to do this weird thing where we have effects inside Pro Tools for playback. And then during record, I'd have to have it separate here and then lastly, just again, to make it very simple, we are sending out click through SoundGrid five and six. And that's coming in here to the click channel that I set up. These can be anything, but this allows us to also have a click track for input mode and a playback mode. So it's very, very easy. So in the last section over here, this is our output section. This is gonna take the input from our main bus, effects, etc. or if we have these stemmed out, this will be going over here. If we use our sends to our musicians, and then it's also taking our sends that were coming in from the studio racks. 
So just a quick recap here. We have small band. We are in the studio. We want everybody to play live. Studio rec on every channel. Sound grid processing. Here's all of our plugins loaded up. And we are using the eMotion monitoring to send headphone mixes to drummer, bass, guitar, keys, vocal one, and vocal two. That's on every channel. So that is going here when we are recording in input mode. And here's our headphone mixes again. This section is going to our left, right main for us only. And then all the mixes that you can control here, of course it's post fader right now, but you can make it pre. These are going to the outputs, drummer, bass, guitar, etc. right here. When we are playing back, if we are overdubbing, which we'll talk about in another video. There's a different way I'm gonna set up that's a little easier if you're just working with one musician. But if we're overdubbing or you know punching in parts, then we'll be in playback mode when we play back. And we will be controlling that mix off of all the faders here. And that's gonna to go to our main bus here. And then we've got that being sent, of course, to our main here. So we can listen. And then we are also sending it to all the musicians. So they have the same level. And then lastly, we have effects here. We're using it in this input channel here because we want to make it very easy to hear effects, both input monitoring and playback. So here we are sending to effects one here with the vocals in input mode while we're recording. And that's going to here and then we're sending it out the musicians. But during playback, audio is not muted, going back to the DAW. It's being sent out sound grid three and four, and then coming in here, and then I send it here over to the verb, and then the verb to the musicians so they can hear it. Pretty easy. And then lastly, here's the click, and we're not using a studio rack on the click, obviously but we are sending it out five and six and going into here so the drummer and the bass can hear it. And then we also have it set up the where we can hear it if we need to as well. Anyway, guys, I hope I shed some light on using SoundGrid Studio in a larger setup if you're tracking a band and make it as easy as possible to understand and use. So stay tuned for part two. And if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe as always. And uh, stay tuned for more content. So thanks again, guys, for watching. Take care.